Hey guys, we are back with another reaction video. Today, we will be taking a look at the Baltimore Orioles as the team of the future. Um, this video is officially by Baseball Mania. I just subscribed. I love baseball. Um, you guys know I'm a huge Oriole fan. I'm only, I'm one of the fans though, who speak the truth about our ownership. And our ownership, yeah, they are building for the future. But we need to be building for a win now, just in my opinion. But we'll be taking a look at this video and see why the Baltimore Orioles are the team of the future. Original video by Big. The year yeah. is 2030, and the O's have either faded into oblivion or become better than they were from 1966 through to 1983. Tell me, which of these futures are most likely to happen? Considering how badly the O's fell off in 2018, then I'd say... The future where they fade into oblivion is what's most likely to happen. But seeing how phenomenal their comeback was, I'd say the future is pretty bright. This is how many wins they racked up in 2018. And this is how many they've racked up in 2023. Yeah, but wins in the regular season to me don't matter. It's when the playoff comes, then that's when it all matters. And we crumbled in the playoffs. We literally got swept by the Texas Rangers to congratulations to them, who are the World Series champions. We should have built for a win now. We can't, we can't be building for a championship in 2047. You get what I'm saying? You see, this 2018 decline of the O's was already in the works two years before. And in the 2016 season, they managed to maintain an above 500 record, earning right. a wild card spot after falling short in their division. The following year, in 2017, the Orioles began with a promising 22-10 record. Despite their early success, they experienced their worst losing season since 2011. In 2018, the Orioles were in shambles, both on and off the field. I believe that's when they traded Manny Machado, right? To the uh, Dodgers, I think. Yeah, he was traded to the Dodgers. Then he went to the Padres. They were a complete disaster, becoming the league's laughingstock. With a dismal 47-115 record. They joined a rare club of teams winning fewer than 50 games in a season. To put it in perspective, even the Royals, who had the second worst record, were miles ahead, leaving Orioles fans utterly discouraged. What made it worse was the lack of hope for a better future. By 2018, it had become clear that the era of general manager Duquette and manager Showalter in Baltimore was ending. I enjoyed Showalter's time there. I think he did build a, help build a winning club. But like I said, the problem is, and I agree with my dad, he did not pick the right pitchers for the right moment during the playoffs. We basically, um, 2014, we did good, I think. 2014, we definitely, um, you know, we got a, um, we swept the Tigers in the AODS. And then we collapse versus the Royals and the ALCS. 2012, the year prior, we won the wild card game and then got a game up on the Yankees and then lost. That's all I wanted from the Orioles this year. To get one game in the ALDS. And they couldn't do that. But <clears throat> it is what it is. In 2016, we all know Yabato Jimenez is the worst pitcher, I believe, in the MLB giving a nuke to Edward and Colonacion to end the game. Insane. Their contracts weren't renewed after the season, and that marked the conclusion of their time with the O's. In July of that same year, the O's kick-started their rebuild by parting ways with beloved players like Manny Mikado, Zach Britton, Jonathan Shu, and other. Okay, first of all, it's pretty, this man pronouncing them wrong. The O's kick-started their rebuild by parting oh, ways real. with beloved players like Manny Machado. It's Manny Machado, not Manny Machado. Okay. It's Manny Machado. Zach Britton, Jonathan Shoop. And a, it's Jonathan Scope, not Jonathan Shoop. The O's kick-started their rebuild by parting ways with beloved players man like fail. Manny Machado, Zach Britton, Jonathan Shoop, and others. The following year, they struggled, ending with a 54-108 record surpassing the losses of the Orioles team in 1988. In 2020, despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, yeah. they showed promise with a 25-35 finish, their best since 2017. However, 
2021 proved tough with multiple losing streaks, culminating in a 52-110 record, marking their third 110 loss season in team history, a fate they shared with the St. Louis Browns in 1939 and the Orioles in 2018. In the 2022 season, the Orioles displayed improvement and secured fourth spot in the AL East, despite low expectations. The Orioles surprised everyone by exceeding predictions, initially set at an over-under of 62 and a half wins. They defied odds. Top prospect Adley Rutschman's arrival signaled a new era, and young talents like Gunnar Henderson showcased their potential. Gunnar Henderson, though, he needs to... He cost us that AODS game. I don't care what anyone says. He cost us that AODS game. Because you don't run... You don't try to steal a base in my opinion, in a crucial um, ninth inning. You know, you don't try to do stupid stuff. And Gunnar Henderson did something stupid. Um, he, they also got rid of Trey Mancini this year, uh, 2022, I believe. They um, gave him away to, I think, the Astros, but then he became a bench player for Houston. Then he went to Chicago for the Cubs. So. The Orioles' average pitching was bolstered by a strong bullpen, especially with Jorge Lopez's standout performance. Their remarkable improvement was evident. They finished 83-79, a 31-game leap from 2021. What's even more impressive? This transformation didn't rely on big spending. Most players were on rookie contracts, keeping the payroll low. Additionally, they secured the number one pick in the 2022 draft, adding another top prospect in Jackson Holiday. In the offseason, they made strategic signings, bringing in pitcher Kyle Gibson and former all-star infielder Adam Frazier. Behind the scenes, general manager Mike Elias. Now on holiday, I'm really excited to see how he comes up because he's like a beast on MLB The Show. So, yeah. Um, who did he talk about again? That's Batista right there. New draft, adding another top prospect in Jackson Holiday. In the offseason, they made strategic signings, bringing in pitcher Kyle Gibson and former all-star infielder Adam Frazier. Kyle Gibson was kind of a bad move because he was very, very up and down. We need a pitcher who wins a lot and not is up and down. Um, like, And the only wins he got were like lucky because of a bullpen. Adam Frazier, he didn't do much. Um, the signing we got from Frazier, he didn't do much. I will say, though, the one who did a lot, and I'm surprised, I would have called him the MVP of the playoffs for us, um, even though we got swept by the Rangers. Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks was our MVP of the playoffs, I think. Dude went off. I think um, I think we should keep Hicks. If not, we already got rid of him. Then we're kind of screwed. Um, we got Craig Kimbrell in the offseason. Not really. He's just there for a a replacement of Batista, and then we'll probably trade him once Batista comes back healthy. Um, and that's going to be 2025 because he'll be out this whole year. So, but yeah, I think I'll give my thoughts at the end where I see my Orioles, my hometown team, but I really, I don't think it's going to be a good year. Behind the scenes, general manager Mike Elias played a key role as the executive VP and GM, steering the team's strategic decisions. The farm system was in the capable hands of farm director, Matt Blood, ensuring a focus on nurturing young talent for the Orioles' future. Hmm, come 2023, the O's would shock the world with a comeback that no one saw coming. Before we further break down what the 2023 season has been for the O's, please make sure to subscribe and smash the like button. This team will be scrutinized, right, celebrated so. for as long as the game is played. Uh, I want to hear what he has to say about the 2023 season. Because, like I said, I think, my personal opinion, it wasn't a major failure, but it was a failure nonetheless because, like, we got swept in the playoffs. 100-win team getting swept in the playoffs. Like, yeah, that's not good. Contrary to expectations, the Orioles set a franchise record for wins in the month of April, winning 19 and losing 9. Another remarkable achievement came on September 4th when they broke a long-standing American League record, going unbeaten in 84 consecutive series of two or more games, surpassing the 1922-24 New York Yankees. 
The Orioles matched their 2016 win total, and victories against the Red Sox and the St. Louis Cardinals ensured they won at least one game against... Mm, okay, hold on. Where's my bro? He just showed my bro. The biggest mistake in Oriole history. I think we all can agree. Giving Chris Davis all that money for... That's like what the Dodgers are doing. They're basically sh shoving money at people, expecting them to do good. We don't know, honestly, how Sho Shohei Otani could get injured like the first day of the season. You never know. Same with Teoscar Hernandez and uh, Yoshi Yomo Yoshi Yamamoto. Um, but yeah, Chris Davis giving all him. That money that was not good. Victories against the Red Sox and the St. Louis Cardinals yeah, ensured they won at least one game against every MLB opponent in the regular season. Mm. The pivotal moment came on September 17th when they clinched a playoff spot, yep. ending a postseason drought dating back to 2016. On September 28th, the Orioles clinched their first division title for the first time since 2014 and only the second time since 1997. This win also guaranteed them 100 or more victories for the first time since 1980. Mm -hmm. Despite their regular season successes, the Orioles faced disappointment in the playoffs, being swept in three games by the eventual World Series oh, champions, God. the Texas Rangers, in the ALDS. It still doesn't change the fact that in just two years after trailing a staggering 39 games behind the fourth place team, the O's breathed new life into baseball in Baltimore. Their resurgence was marked by an electrifying style of play a youthful, determined roster of athletes who ignited the field with their aggressive approach, be it on the bases, at bat, or on the mound. This spirited team swiftly went from being the league's weakest link to being an impregnable powerhouse. Their incredible feat was highlighted by their record. They clinched the best record in the American League. This achievement, following their prior position as the worst team, etched their name in history alongside the 1967 to 69 Mets. Let me show you something real quick. Yeah, I never would have thought this. And their incredible feat was highlighted by their record. They clinched the. Now look at this. This is this is a very interesting record. We have the Yankees at the bottom with eighty three um, wins. It looks like all the way at the bottom was the Red Sox. Like we beat the two, I would say biggest. Like we. They're the two biggest enemies in the AO East, the Red Sox and Yankees. The Rays, we got a game up on them. But like I said, all this didn't matter, I felt like, because we got swept in the playoffs. The best record in the American League. This achievement, following their prior position as the worst team, etched their name in history alongside the 1967-69 to 69 Mets. They became only the second team in Major League history to accomplish the remarkable feat of winning 100 games in the same three-year period, in which they had also lost 100 games. So how did the Orioles defy the precedents, probabilities, and projections? The O's surprising success can be attributed to a combination of factors. Their achievements were not solely due to luck. Although they outperformed their Pythagorean and base runs records, they also excelled in areas where others fell short. Both the rotation and bullpen exceeded expectations. Additionally, the Orioles made smart moves in the transfer market, transforming castoffs like Ryan O'Hearn and Aaron Hicks into valuable contributors. That's what I'm saying, dude. Aaron Hicks, he just insane. Ryan O'Hearn, I think, did pretty all right as well. But Aaron Hicks, dude, he was our he was our MVP, I think. However, the true cornerstone of their success lay in their farm system, consistently regarded as baseball's best for two consecutive years. Look at this. Holiday, Kowser, Kenston, Mayo, Ortiz, damn. There's going to be a lot of people coming up. I think Holiday needs to get transferred to the MLB, like, on opening day, I think. Now, the rest of these guys, I don't know much. I know Kirsten's pretty all right. I think he hit one home run. He had one game where he hit a home run. For us, and I think it was debut, and then that was it. So, despite their struggles at the big league level, the Orioles capitalized on high draft picks, mm -hmm. making astute selections. Their efforts in international scouting also paid off, yielding talented prospects like Samuel Basayo. Notably, players like Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson, and Jackson Holiday highlighted the depth of their prospect pool. 
The Orioles set a remarkable record by having seven Baseball America preseason top 100 prospects make their major league debuts over two consecutive seasons. Looking ahead, the Orioles face uncertainties, especially with key players like Gibson, Frazier, Lopez, Hicks, Flaherty, and Fujinami nearing free agency. Fujinami was actually not that good. <laughs> Fujinami, he uh, he was very um, wild for us. He was uh, he wasn't that good. However, there's optimism within the team. The players believe in the progress made and anticipate better days in the future. Despite the setbacks, they maintain a steadfast belief in their potential, eagerly anticipating the chance to reshape their narrative in the upcoming seasons. As they temporarily part ways, the team is already looking ahead to the promise of spring training. They are gearing up to confront the challenges and embrace the opportunities that the next season will undoubtedly bring. Coach Hyde, reflecting on the team's optimism, reassures fans with confidence, declaring, this team going forward, heads up, it's going to be a really good ball club. But is it? Is it really going to be a good club? What happened to the O's is history repeating itself again. Way back in the mid-late 1890s, the O's were awful. But by the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the O's were a powerhouse. It seems they do have a thing for comebacks. The prospect of the Orioles returning to a playoff contention in 2024 or 2025 appears promising given their wealth of okay. talented young players. However, there's a significant caveat. Despite their potential, prospects don't always meet expectations in the major leagues, as was the case with the Detroit Tigers in the previous season. Even with two of the top five prospects on the 2022 MLB pipeline list, the Tigers' high hopes didn't translate on the field, leading to a disappointing season and highlighting the uncertainties that come with relying on young talent. Orioles fans, while optimistic, are well aware that the road to success in the big leagues can be unpredictable, underscoring the challenges that lie ahead for Baltimore. Still, O's fans can dream today and have reason to be hopeful. Even if a handful don't pan out, the O's need just three or four to live up to the hype. If they do, MLB might have found its next dynasty. The Orioles boast a roster brimming with top-tier talent, spearheaded by the widely acclaimed Adley Rutschman. Expectations for Rutschman are sky-high, with many anticipating he'll contend for MVP honors. However, the Orioles' talent pool goes beyond Rutschman featuring standout players like Anthony Santander, Austin Hayes, and Gunnar Henderson. And Jackson Holiday, who, like I said previous, I'm really excited for him to come up. This depth reflects a team that's not just promising for the future, but one that has truly arrived. The Orioles have transcended their former reputation as a team with potential. They're no longer just a team that might be good in the future. They are a force to be reckoned with now. As they continue to demonstrate their prowess on the field, it's time for the betting markets and fans alike to recognize their capabilities. Placing bets in favor of Baltimore, not just within their division, but also in the broader scope of the American League, might be a wise choice as this formidable team continues to make its mark in the league. When the next season dawns, the Orioles are poised to be the team to beat in the fiercely competitive AL East. While they'll retain their youthful vigor, the 2024 Orioles will be bolstered by valuable experience gained during their impressive 2023 campaign. Fans streaming in the Camden Yards on opening day will likely find themselves filled with excitement and hope, thrilled about the team's promising direction. It will be a day of celebration and anticipation, marking the beginning of what promises to be a bright and exciting chapter for the Baltimore Orioles. So knowing all this, what do you think the future of the Orioles will be? I think the future looks bright, and come 2030, they will definitely not be out of the picture. Or will they? This is an alright video. Um, hmm. Let me give this a like. Um, honestly, I think... I don't think they'll... Alright, I think they'll get the last place in the wild card. Um, now, I don't think they'll be maybe, I guess... Swept in the wild card, but I see him barely winning, having to win the final game. Um, because now it's a series, it's uh, one, um, you have to win two games. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think I think they'll be eliminated in the ALDS like previous, um, but I think they will get a game. Um, up on whoever they're facing. 
Um, but I think it will it'll be a gentleman sweep four to um or no, since it's three to one. Okay. So it'll be like um it'll go to game four, basically. Um so yeah, that was uh baseball mania. Um Baltimore Orioles are the team of the future. I don't know, man. I really I'm really interested to see how the season plays out because I know we're built for the future, but I feel like I've always said we need to be in win now mode, but that's going to do it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.